In this video, I'm going to be attempting to paint an entire undead army in one week. Like many people in the tabletop gaming hobby, I have a mountain of miniatures that I've collected over the years. I've got a display cabinet full, I've got boxes and boxes of built and painted models, I've got boxes of unpainted models, and since getting a 3D printer, that collection has only grown. So I wanted to get through some of that backlog and I thought I would set myself a challenge. I wanted to see if I could paint an entire army in a single week and then document my progress and share it with all of you. Now, the models that I've chosen for this, the army that I've chosen for this is an undead army. It's a desert themed kind of mummified undead army. The models are from a company called one page rules and I chose these because I really like the kind of Egyptian deserty aesthetic that they've got. It means that I can use them for my games of D&D which are set in a desert setting. If the players come across some undead they can have some flavoured undead rather than sort of northeastern European style undead and I just really like the aesthetic of the models. So I decided I'd paint this entire army that I've printed up over the last couple of months in a single week, see how I get on. Now, before we dive into this, there are a couple of things that I wanna consider about painting this army. So first up is that this is a lot of models. It's close to a hundred. And if I want any hope of being able to do this in a single week, then I'm gonna to need to approach it with a very particular mindset. And the thing that I think is gonna save me in this is gonna be contrast paint from Games Workshop. So for those of you that don't know, contrast paint is a thinner paint that's got really high pigmentation. So when you apply it, you apply it kind of like a wash. It's a very watery paint. It goes on, it colors the models, and then it also shades the recesses. And sometimes it can leave kind of highlight looking areas on raised surfaces, but it's more about, for me, getting that initial color and the shade in one. So the contrast is gonna be pulling most of the work. As the models are undead, Skeleton Horde Contrast is gonna be kind of my workhorse for getting all of that bone done. And I'll be priming everything with Wraith Bone Primer to give it that kind of bony hue to start with. Doing a test model on something like this is super important because it lets you understand your order of operations. So I know the order that I wanna go in is kind of, I wanna start with a bone because that will be washes and dry brushes. Then I wanna move on to the purple and then the gold and then all the other details. As much as possible, I want to use contrast paint for this because it will be quicker and easier than using base paints and then washing and highlighting. And given that I'm painting a whole army, speed is really going to be a factor here. I don't want to spend 10 hours on each model. I want to be able to get through them really quickly. So I've already primed everything and I did this for a couple of reasons. One, it is getting into the autumn here in the UK. So weather is really dependent at the moment. So the last time we had a relatively clear day it was still raining but i managed to kind of hunker down in the shed built myself a little cardboard fortress and prime everything whilst it was raining and the primer went on for the most part fine so that means i'm not waiting on the weather during this challenge it means i can just dive into it from there my game plan is on the first day to try and get everything that has bone detail on it done do everything in purple on the second day do everything in gold on the third details on the fourth and do everything all together like that try and get everything done be as efficient as possible in using the the one color i'm using across the entire army so with that let's dive straight into it so day one started with me trying to paint up the mummy flesh. Now I wanted something kind of rotten and desaturated. So I opted to go for a mix of apothecary white and gulliman flesh. This ended up not working. It made it a bit too desaturated and not interesting looking enough. So instead I switched to Griff Charger Grey, another contrast paint. This kind of blue tone really helped for a dead sickly kind of skin. Once that was done, I moved on to the bone and I painted every model that had exposed bone with a wash of Skeleton Horde contrast paint. Once this was all dry, I went back in and dry brushed with Tyrant Skull, the Citadel dry paint, and then Praxetti White, the Citadel dry paint. This just brought the color back up and made it a little bit more vibrant and helped make it pop against all the other colors that we're gonna be putting on. Okay, so it's the end of day one and so far, things are pretty much exactly on schedule. The only thing I'm not happy with day one wise is the mummy skin looks fine on the mummies. So on the mummies, they've got this kind of blue 
cool tone skin, the Griff Charger Grey, and that looks great on such a small surface. But on the Giants, they have some areas where they have a kind of flesh. And I washed that with the Griff Charger Grey and it just didn't look right. So I went back in, covered it over with some Reichland Flesh Shade um, to try and bring a bit of warmth to it, bring a bit of life to it. That kind of worked. And then I mixed some Reichland Flesh Shade with some Gulliman Flesh, uh, the contrast paint put that over it that's bought it back up so now it looks like this sickly kind of really horrible flesh color which i think looks appropriate for kind of a decaying creature i won't know how i really feel about the the giant flesh tone until i've put all the colors in and i can see it in the context of the rest of the model painted overall i'm pretty pleased with the progress of today it's the pretty much all of the bone done on what would it be 30 40 10 20 30 40 40 infantry a bunch of cavalry the chariots the giants and then the flesh done on anything with the mummified flesh a little bit ahead of schedule so hopefully we can keep that up and we'll get to the finish line and everything will be fine but i'll see you tomorrow two was just painting purple every single model got a coat of purple and that was a mix of one part shyish purple the contrast paint from citadel one part zarius purple the layer paint from citadel and two parts contrast medium the basic shyish purple is very dark so i wanted something a little weaker than that which is why i used some contrast medium but then i wanted to keep some of that saturation which is why i went with zarius purple so then end of day two and today has just been purple i've been painting purple non-stop for the last like nine hours um but all the purple is done my hand is cramping to all high heaven but all the purple is done and i'm starting to have doubts <laughs> um so there's still gold there's still all of the kind of strapping which is in black and there's still all of the wood and all of the metal. The wood and the black contrast paint, it'll go over any overspill really easy. The gold is a two-step process, it's gold and a wash, and any metals are gonna be silver and a wash, or gold and a wash. And that's just on the undead that's in progress. I've still got the Snakeman, I've still got the Anubis Warriors and the Sphinx. Part of me is beginning to wonder whether this may have been a, a mite ambitious. Um, but eh, it'll probably be fine um i don't know whether we'll get everything done by the deadline i am starting to doubt and question and wonder whether or not this is even possible so tomorrow's gonna be a real real interesting day i truly had no idea what was in store for me on day three so day three i woke up to a phone call from my partner saying her little boy was ill and we spent most of the day going back and forth between doctors and hospitals fortunately he is okay but it did turn out that he had covid so my partner and her kids had to go into isolation they're all obviously really poorly but they're doing all right thankfully but it meant that day three had very little paint and i didn't get any footage recorded for day three because i was waiting by the phone all day waiting to go to different places and pick them up if they needed and all that kind of stuff but i managed to get a lot of the mummies most of the way there by the end of day three i was really feeling the fatigue of having to try and paint one color across 90 models all in one go and my back had started to really hurt and my hand was cramping like an absolute mother so I decided from day four onwards that I would switch to just painting a batch of models so 10 models at a time do all of the colors on them and move on to the next batch and see if that helped keep my interest and keep the fatigue down so day four i spent most of the day batch painting in smaller units which helped a lot for keeping my concentration and keeping that fatigue down at the end of the day i had to go and get a pcr test just to make sure that i was covid negative which i was thankfully so i cracked on and painted the black on all of the mummies i chose to use black templar contrast for all the belts and straps and a lot of the bandaging on the non-mummy models because it's a dark color that would go over everything else and if i'd overspill anywhere this would help to cover it up 
Around this time, I also decided that I really wasn't liking the purple all that much. It still felt too desaturated to me. So I hit everything with a coat of Druki Violet Shade just to bring some of that saturation back. And I am really glad I did because I think it made a, a really big difference on the purple. Okay, so we're going up to the end of day four here and it actually went a lot better than I expected it to today. I managed to get uh, 20 zombies finished, 10 of the tomb guard, 10 of the archers, three chariots, a giant and five cavalry pretty much finished which means that I have 20 of the regular skeletons, a couple of heroes and then the non kind of skeleton stuff so the snakes, the anubis and the sphinx left pleasantly surprised with the progress today so a lot of the stuff yesterday by the end of day three still looked really awful it was still in that stage where it wasn't finished so it looked terrible but now that i kind of thrown some washes on there and i've very quickly just mocked up some basing because i'm going to be using some quick basing stuff on this but I wanted just to colour underneath it, paint the base room, just tidy it up a little bit to get a sense of what it would look like finished and you know they're not perfect because they've been painted with contrast paints and quick and dirty techniques but they are as a force starting to look really cohesive and I've, I'm starting to get a really good feeling for once the basing is done I think the basing is going to be what really takes it to the next level once all that deserty sand is on there and i've put down some tufts and some flowers and a few little details it's going to look really good so it's the end of day four tomorrow is day five and i'm hoping to get every element of the skeletal force finished so the remaining skeleton warriors the 20 of those all the heroes and the remaining two giants i want all of them done tomorrow and then the last two days will be for the non-skeletal stuff. So I'll see you tomorrow. I started day five by painting all of the wooden details across the remaining skeletons. Again, I used wildwood contrast paint for this and I chose such a dark color to help cover over anywhere that I'd overspilled. One of the things that I really didn't want to do during this week of painting was have to go back and touch up my base coats to cover them with the washes and the shading and all of the contrast because across so many models that would have been a real time sink. Then I switched to painting gold, just so much gold. It feels like the second half of this challenge really was just painting gold over and over and over. Okay, so end of day five and another pretty productive day today. I got 20 infantry, uh, two heroes and two giants finished. And I got the little sarcophagus carrying mummies almost finished as well. I didn't get the two remaining heroes on foot finish today. I'm not too bothered if I don't get them done. I'm not overly fond of the models themselves, so I'm gonna put them on the back burner, do them last if I have time. Tomorrow my plan is to tackle everything that isn't a skeleton or everything that's primed in bone and isn't a skeleton. So these snakes for the snake riders and then also the snake warriors that's going to be a lot of airbrushing um, to get the skin down so I'm thinking a kind of um, pinky flesh tone on the underbelly and then for the snakes themselves I want to do one blue probably one red and then one maybe kind of a coal black that might be quite cool and then for the kind of snake man warriors a lot of their model is going to be a kind of gold color these headrest headpiece things they've got are going to be gold the collar around them is going to be gold and their belts will be gold i don't know what color i'll paint their bodies yet i might paint their bodies purple i might run the purple mix that i've used for all of the purple tones on the rest of the army through the airbrush to start and paint that purple that would be one way to tie them in with the rest of the army with the gold and then they've just got those fleshy colors on the skin and um, we'll see how that goes i'm not sure uh, about my airbrush skills to be able to get all that done 
and then that will leave us on the final day painting everything that's black the anubis warriors the scorpions and the sphinx and that is going to rely heavily on using uh, zenithal sprays of various colors and um, various gray tones up to white and then some washes and some dry brushes to bring all them together but it's it's going to be tight but i feel much better after yesterday and today than i did after the first couple of days the first couple of days i really really worried that i wouldn't be able to get this done and now i'm looking at it the majority of the army is done there's 20 30 40 50 60 60 infantry like six cavalry three chariots three giants and a hero already finished so when i look at that there is an army already finished i just need to do the finishing touches so i will catch up with you tomorrow and we'll paint some snakes so to paint my black undercoated models the models that i wanted to be predominantly black i didn't want to just use flat grays i wanted a little bit of color in there and given that the rest of the army used so many warm tones i wanted to use more cool tones for this so i gave everything a coat of vallejo air black just to give it a nice flat base coat to work from and then I mixed in some Vallejo Air white as well as some dark Prussian blue just to give it that blue gray tint that cool tone and then I painted all of the raised areas in a zenithal highlight hitting everything from above leaving the darkest recesses in shadow. While I had the airbrush out, I loaded in some skin colored paints and painted the underbelly on all the snake riders as well as the flesh for the snake man warriors. In hindsight, I probably should have used a, a more yellow tone for this, which would have matched for what a snake actually looks like. I think I went a bit too paley pink and a bit too human skin tone for this, but it still looks pretty good. Then once all the airbrushing was done for the day, I moved on to dry brushing all of the black parts on the model. To do this, I used Citadel's Ethereum Blue, a dry brush paint, and I went over that really lightly, including all the areas in shadow just to tie it all together. I then went in with a wash of Nuln oil just to darken all of those colors back down, tie everything together even more, and I'm really happy with the end result. During day six, I also completed the Snake Riders, applying Talisar blue contrast paint to one of them and Flesh Terrors red to the other, as well as some Black Templar to the third. I really like these two pops of bright, vibrant color. They really draw the eye in the army, and I think they're a nice counterpoint to the darker tones that you use throughout the rest of the army. So here we are at the end of day six. Things have not gone nearly as quickly as I had hoped they would today. So with the rest of the army, all the, the skeletal elements, that was all primed in Wraithbone spray. And a chunk of the section that I've been doing today, the scorpions, the sphinx, the Anubis warriors, all of those were primed in black. And holy moly has it taken a lot longer to build up the color on them than it did on Wraithbone. I think that if I take nothing else away from this, it's just I'm gonna spray everything in Wraithbone no matter what color it's gonna be because everything goes on so creamy smooth. Almost everything's been a one coat job over the Wraithbone, whereas over the black it's been multiple coats and that has slowed things down a lot. But I got a bunch done today. I finished these really super simple scorpions, but well, mostly finished. And I need to do a little bit of a wash on the pair of them, but that won't take five minutes. I finished all three of the snake riders, which add a, a really nice pop of vibrant color to the army, which is really nice while still having some of the purple and gold elements that tie it together. I finished the Anubis warriors, which actually came out really nicely. I think airbrushing the colors on worked really well and with the purple and gold they're gonna look really nice against everything else. Day six again was painting a whole bunch of gold. I did this with a base coat of Retributor armor followed up by a wash of Reichland flesh lead. I didn't bother highlighting any of the gold or any of the purple throughout this project because I just didn't have the time and I thought given that I'm painting 90 models it probably wouldn't be necessary. It is something that I could go back in the future and do, just give a little dry brush over the gold, maybe a few selective edge highlights on the purple, but that wasn't necessary for painting this army in this project. Once all of the main colors were applied to the models, I moved on to basing and I knew that I didn't want to have to paint 90 bases because that would have been an absolute 
nightmare. So instead I opted to use Geek Game and Scenic's base ready range. I used the two different kinds of sand that they have in the range, one coarse and one fine. I started off by applying a coat of glue all over the base, dipping them in the coarse sand and then going straight into the fine sand. And that fine sand seeps into all the little cracks and crevices left by the coarse sand, helps bring the brightness of the bases up a little bit as well and just unifies it together. Then after I'd applied some tufts of dead grass and some purple and pink flowers, the army was finished. Overall, I am really, really pleased with this army. I feel like every day, how pleased I am with it has gotten a little bit more. Every time I look at it, I think, yeah, that is actually really good. There was a point in the middle there where I was really doubting whether I would even get the challenge done. And I really thought that everything was gonna look like hot garbage. But in the end, I'm really pleased with the result. None of the models look incredible on their own, but as a unified force when they're all on the table, especially at kind of arm's length, I think they really come together and make a really great looking force. I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. I'd love to know what kind of model making and miniature related projects you'd like to see me tackle in the future, or if there are any other kind of challenges you'd like to see me take on. Now that I can see the army on the bookshelf, I'd really like to like build a diorama that fits the confines of that bookshelf. Maybe like a medieval town square or something like with a job notice board and some carts and all the cool little storytelling beats in there. That would be really fun. And I think it would make for a really interesting video. And there's a whole bunch of other miniatures that I'd really like to pick up. Star Wars Legion, for example, I've been really interested in since it launched. I don't have any, but I'd really like to pick some up. So if you've got any suggestions for models that you'd like to see me tackle, leave them in the comments down below. But until next time, happy gaming.